We are back and we are almost to the MVC part of ASP.NET Core introduction. Not quite, but almost. What we're going to do here is we're going to give you a little bit of extra context. Now, if you want to save a little time, it's okay. You can skip ahead to directly into the MVC portion of the day. But we wanted to do a little bit of work on routing because if you look here, we've got app.run and response.write async, but that's not very sophisticated. All we really did was say hello world. We talked a lot, but only hello world got yeah, sent. Yeah, all we did was just send one line mm -hmm. over to the browser. And we didn't do anything based on what the URL was, right? No, we didn't even really touch on that at all. Exactly. So we could skip to MVC and a lot of context would potentially be lost, but we thought we would spend a few minutes talking about routing. So how can I think about routing? Um, would it be what the request is when I ask for it, when I go to a web page? So if I go to my uh, blog and I'm looking for a particular post and it goes to that post, is that what routing is? Right. So if you said slash post slash six. Six, post six. Somebody has to know that they're the handler for slash post. Yeah, that they're in control of that. Is that what routing does for us? Exactly. So if you look here, app.run is doing it for all requests. Everything. Everything. What we want to do is we want to say, and I'll just do this in a comment. I'll say, who handles slash Maria? Who handles slash Scott? And then to your example, who has handles slash blog slash six or whatever. So this little chunk of code handles everything. How would we split this up and start dealing with single responsibilities principle? We want to have little bits of code that are responsible for just what they do and no more. And routing is better than going and writing a bunch of if statements. Yes. It, that, that doesn't seem too sophisticated and also looks tedious. It would not scale at all. So it would be a lot of repetition. It would absolutely be a lot of repetition. All right. So we're going to continue. continue. So we're going to continue with this uh, little empty ASP.NET Core application. And I'm going to go over to References and say Manage NuGet Packages. All right. So there must be a routing package. There is package a routing well. package, exactly. And you'll, as you use ASP.NET, you'll learn about the different packages that are available for you. So here is ASP.NET Core middleware. And it's important to remember that all these building blocks are middleware. So pretty much every single dependency that we work with is some sort of middleware? Um, almost. Any, any ASP.NET dependency that changes the pipeline from the moment the request comes in until the moment the response goes back is a piece of middleware. Okay. Okay. And you remember that we added static files yes. as a middleware so that when the request came in for index.html, static file middleware had the first chance. Oh, yes. Remember when we switched it around because yeah. it wasn't recognizing it? Exactly. Yes. And then the, the do it, the, uh, the say hello middleware basically won. Yes, because it was ahead of it. Mm -hmm. And the static file never fired. So order matters. Order matters. So we're going to go in here and say install routing. All right. And accept that. All right. And we will go back down here. And remember before when we had some services that we needed to add. Uh, routing has some services that it needs. Okay. So we're going to say services.add routing. So we're telling it about routing and we're letting it know if you need to get a bunch of stuff and services get them ready because we're going to turn routing on. All right. All right. So right now we've got our developer exception page. We'll explore that a little bit later. And we've got our do it function, which is basically <laughs> all, all, everything that comes in goes through there. Now we're going to do this pattern again. We've seen this before, right? These builders, route builder. I'm going to say new route builder. And notice it doesn't find it because I have to add that. Using namespace. Yeah. Using namespace. Exactly right. So we'll go like that. And then we're going to pass in the app. We're telling Route Builder about the app. We're passing it in. And all the things that's showing out in the bottom are the different, different options that you can do. Right. So there's actually two overloads for okay. Route Builder. One that takes an app, one that takes an app and a potential default handler. I'm not going to deal with that okay. because Routing is pretty low level. We're just going to talk about it uh, kind of abstractly and uh, move into MVC. So now I'm going to take that route builder, the one that I just made, and we're going to look at this. So what, what, what is it? Is this uh, when I say map get, is it like getting? We want to map 
some get, an HTTP get, get might be git slash Maria. So these are just HTTP get, post, all that stuff that we know? Exactly. So these are mapping of the major verbs, okay. get, post, put, delete. And then down here, map verb would mean like for an obscure verb like options or one that doesn't get used yes. very often. Okay. Okay. So we'll say, let's map a git. And I'll just map it on quote, quote. We're passing in a template. So the route that matches that given template. So this should be like the default route, this, you know, the nothing route. Okay. And then we'll do just like we did before, context dot response dot write async. I think you're missing a context to that. I mean, you're absolutely right. Thank you for that. Hello from routing. All so right. when this application is fired up and we see hello from routing, that is being handled by the router. Hopefully that middleware gets in, gets in there ahead of this and it will not say hello world. This is the hello world catch all. Oh yeah. Right. But we need to say route builder uh, dot build, just like we do that with all of our builders. And we have to tell the app around it. Remember how we've been saying use this and yes. use that? We say oh. use router. Okay. So here's the deal. Let's look at these three lines together. We say route builder. In this case, we're giving it one route. We're going to build that up into a router. And then we're going to say use this router. Adds a router middleware to this app. So those three lines together are really basic routing. And let's see if we got it right. Maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. All oh. right. Look at that. Okay. So. Yep. Hello from routing. And fancy production. All right. Let's try something else. Let's try slash foo. Okay. So quote, quote, or nothing. Yeah. That's hello from routing. Anything else like foo or bar is coming from app.run? It's coming from app.run. Exactly. So let's do a little experimentation. Should we try getting rid of app.run? That's a good question. Yeah, I guess it would probably, let's do that. That'll probably end up being a 404 then. Good experiment to try. Okay, fire that up. Hello from routing. Slash foo is a 404. Because it, it's not there. All right. So then a question would be, let's add another route. All right. So now we're building up a routing table. Oh, that's going to navigate to all these different. It's going to know about all these different things. And it's going to, oops, what did our error get there? Let's see a little error. Oh, I left my application running. Of course, I haven't switched over to IIS yet, which would solve a lot of those problems for me. So there's hello from routing. And if we say slash Maria, your stuff fires. Okay. So it knows by looking at the URL that it matches. This is called a string template or a URL template. And templates can be much more sophisticated. Right now, we're just saying like Maria, that's just a word. Let's try something else. I don't even know if this will work. Okay. Because URLs can be complicated and have all sorts of fancy features. All right. See the difference there? I see the difference. And important to reminder, as if it's not, it might be obvious to everybody, but just a good reminder that what the URL looks like isn't necessarily what the files on disk look like, right? There isn't a Scott folder in a no, it folder. No, it's not there. Right. So it's a mapping uh, that doesn't necessarily have a physical, like I can't go look for the Scott Fu thing. Yeah. And like you couldn't go and see the source of this, like a page, an HTML page. Well, yeah, exactly. The source is just what got returned back. I can't, there's no file that's being served okay. here. It is that little bit of code. So the, ma the router is saying, this URL template matches the URL that got passed in. Therefore, execute this little piece of code. 
And I could build an app with like this way, but it would get pretty. It looked like it would get pretty messy. It would get pretty messy, actually. Let's let's see if we can get a little messier before we give up. So let's actually have it so we can pass in like your uh, you said post, right? Yeah. Like a blog. We'll say map get, and we'll say post, and then we'll say um, post number. Okay. And you see how we've done it like it's the reverse version of what you showed me before with the dollar sign thing. Yes. Okay. Right? So it's as if we're going like that, except this is on the way in. So map get post number. The context is the current HTTP request and response together. Context dot response. Oops. Response dot did I do it wrong again? Dot write async. Why are you mad at me? What do you think? Contacts? Con context? No? No, nope, it's alright. I may be missing a parenthesis. Are you? Let's see. Route builder, map get. Something. Oh no. Test. Let's see if that works. Oh, I need to close my thing there. Build it. You'll see little subtle things like there you go. See the difference? Now watch. The issue was I didn't have a string there yet. See? And it was expecting a string. And look what it's saying. This is really good. This is important to note mistakes like this. If I make a mistake, you'll make this mistake too, right? No overload for write async takes zero arguments. There's no write right. that takes nothing. Okay. Yeah? Oh, yes. <laughs> this yeah. is the thing about, yes. about computers is like, you're like, oh, duh. Duh. Yeah, yeah exactly. of course. A write uh, always takes. Actually, there was, a, there was a, a one time many years ago where I, I forgot a semicolon. And we sat there and stared at this thing for hours and hours. And we, ended up, we called it the million dollar semicolon. Because someone came in like a fresh, fresh eyes, and they're like, oh, semicolon there. Oh, that happens to me all the time. That's programming. Nothing wrong with that. All right. So the difference here is that a URL is going to come in that says post slash post number. number. All right. So then let's do our C sharp awesome string stuff. Log post ID. Now, we can access anything from within there. We can access the this context here, this context object. That's the context that's being passed in, right? So I can say context dot. What are all these options? Get route value. Because po the post, the post for the blog, that, that number, that value, what we call it, post number, can be then plucked out of the URL and then we can output it to the uh, to the user, okay? So post number, close it. So let's let's take a look at that because there's a lot going on there. All right, go and map a get. If the URL looks like this, then write out the words blog post ID. Take a look at the current context that request that just came in and get the value of that part of the route post number. All right. All right. See what that does. So, post slash six. All right. Cool, eh? Cool. So you can put any number in there. Right. Well, here's actually where it gets pretty horrible. What if I went like this? <laughs> it's not a number. Is that a number? All right. How come it didn't? Well, I never said anything about what the rules were for post number. I just said post, post number. number. Yeah. So with route ID, with routing here, you can give it a little bit more information. You can give it a little more context. So I'm going to say it has to be an int. You say colon, and then you give it a, a, a special uh, type value, like date or int, int or long. OK, so let's try that. All right.
so number still works. So let's try poo. Well, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and look. It doesn't. So this is important. This is different. It's not a kind of validation. You didn't validate it. It didn't match the route. Well, okay, so it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And even more specifically, this route, and this is the way we phrase it in the, in the world of routing, uh, it's no longer a greedy route. Sometimes you'll make a mistake and you'll put a, you'll put a route up and it's far too greedy. That it takes in everything. Including stuff that you're not interested in seeing. So let's say, for example, that you knew somehow that post number would only ever be five digits or it always started with nine or whatever. Yeah. You could constrain this even more with like a regular expression. Okay. Or you could write your own custom routing and you could say, I only want to allow values from here to here or whatever. And then that input would never even get passed into you. This code here never runs the blue part if that route doesn't match. Yeah, so it gives you the 404 error. It gives you the 404 because it goes through the process and it says, is it this one? Is it that one? Is it that one? Did that match? I'm not even going to do that. And then, of course, because we have no default, it falls through. So going back to order matters, mm -hmm. if I put route dot map post with an int at the top. Does it change anything? Does it change anything? Like if I go to mm -hmm. slash Scott or slash yeah, yeah, Muriel. Yeah. So that's a great question. It will not change anything because each of these routes is quite specific. But let's prove that. So there's this one, the second route. Yep. And there's post with a number. Okay. And there's Maria. Okay. But we could put another route down here, maybe. That has string? I don't know. Let's find out. Maybe it won't let us. So here's an int and here's a string. And this is the kind of experimenting that you, the audience, should do. And this is important. And I think people don't understand this when they think about learning and learning new frameworks and stuff like this, is they think that all the questions can be answered by reading the docs. They can't. No, we need some testing. You got to, and you got to test it for yourself. So. Mm -hmm. so here we just put in that blog post, and that's a blog post ID. Now, if we put in your name, something else. Huh. Okay. Now, think about ordering for a second. If I move that, which does not have the constraint, up, would this ever get called? Let's explore this. Let's again. explore this option. Yeah, I think about this. That's string. That's this one here. Right? That's int. That's that one there. Okay. If I flipped it around, what do you think? I don't think it would. You think it'll never happen? Why? Remember our vocab from just a moment ago. What we what did we just learn about routes that are greedy? There's our string. string. And there's our string. Strings are greedy because anything can be a string. Everything can be. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ah. OK. Yeah, that was a bit of a, you like that, that was a trick question, but yes. That they, they're greedy because an int, that can be a string. a string. It's a string of one, two, three. Cool? cool. So lots and lots of time can be spent debugging routes where you'll be like, what is going on here? And it turns out that order matters and routes can be greedy and selfish, selfish routes. <laughs> so that's a problem. So make sure that you experiment with the order of the routes are and then observe it. And it's really important to try those different uh, techniques. So that is routing. This is not yet MVC. Not this yet is MVC. the general concept of routing middleware. All right. Okay. Next, we're going to do an introduction to MVC, Model View Controller.